All right, so this is um, a video just to help us with the around the world related rates practice. Now, some of these problems are quite difficult. I'll do a couple. I'm going to show you the setup for basically every single one of them. So we've got the problems here. So if I need the words, I'll be able to refer to them, but I've already kind of started for each problem to make this video not be so long. So A, Jose is blowing up a beach ball at a constant rate of nine cubic feet per cubic centimeters per second. I wrote cubic centimeters. I did not write cubic. I wrote squared. When the volume is this, find the rate of change of the radius. So we are looking for dRdt. This is the volume. We know dVdt. They gave us an equation. And so I'm not going to do this one. It's way too easy, comparatively speaking. So it's not easy, but compared to all the rest of the problems, this is one of the easiest. The volume formula. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the derivative of this formula with respect to t and then solve for dr dt. But don't plug any of this stuff in until after you take the derivative. Derivatives first, plug in second. Really, really, really important. Derivative first, plug in second. But actually, never mind. This one is a little trickier. So I can't, once I take the derivative, I won't have a place to put this. But I still need to know what r is because r will still be in my problem. So I'm actually going to go ahead and play a game. So um, we use other. I do need to find that. So I know the volume is 20 or 8 over 3 pi, and that's equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the pi's are going to go away, and so we're the dividing by 3's. So both of those are going to cancel out. We'll be left with 2048 equals 4 r cubed. Dividing by 4, I get 5, 1, 2 equals r cubed. And the cube root of 512, I think I know this one. No, it's a perfect. Um, cube root, nope, it did not do a cube root. Use cube root. Oh, it doesn't like it. Okay, I think that's the other one. Cube root of 512 is 8. So r is 8. And so then, still, take the derivative of this, plug in dvdt, plug in this value for r, and then find drdt. Okay, I'll leave you with that one. Again, so I'm not doing these, I'm just kind of skipping you a setup. So, a photographer is stationed 250 feet away from a tree. The base of a tall tree, she observes a koala bear climbing up the tree. There's my bear. I see he's climbing. climbing up the tree at a rate of 1.5 feet per second. So 1.5 feet per second. Let me go like this. Get my words in the picture with me. 1.5 feet per second at the instant when the bear is five feet up the tree. This is notice it's a when. So this is like when and the when. So this is a when. We kind of put when in jail. We don't use when right away. I used to use it too soon. It caused me all sorts of trouble. Dht. So you'll notice I've written a Pythagorean theorem out here. I wrote this is h for the height of the tree. This is x because I can't use dis d for distance because then dd is very confusing. So I don't want to do that. Um, so I'm looking for dx dt. You'll notice I actually had d there first. Then I changed it. And so I've got my proof, everything there. Um, when h is 5. You can put 5 in there, solve for x, and then it'll make it lots easier. So one thing to keep in mind is that you can only have at the final, when you're doing the final thing, one missing item. And so after I take the derivative of this, I will have, notice this is not changing. There's no rate of change. There's nothing. So that I just went ahead and used that number. That's not a when, that's an always. She's standing there. She's watching the bear. Take, getting ready to take the picture with her telescopic lens. She's safely far away from the bear. So the when goes in jail. We are going to, but we will use it to find X. Just like I went over here and used my volume to help me find R. We're going to need to do that to find X, but take the derivative of this with respect to, and we will do a Pythagorean theorem problem. I just don't want to do this one. Again, I think it's easier. 
we are going to do C though. C is a very tricky little problem. So let's see what I got here. Let's see how much I can do this. Great. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do C. Um, so we've got a square inscribed a circle as shown. So I redrew that. The radius of the circle. So you'll notice my drawing is not perfect. But basically, I went like this and said, okay, there's the center of the circle. That's R. Okay. And then over here, I did something weird to help me figure out what's going on with the square. So if this is R, this is R, all the radiuses are R. How long is this side? Well, that's a right angle. And these are the same, which makes this 45, 45, which makes this 2 radical R, the square root of 2 times R. Right? Like R radical 2, if you will. If you remember your special right triangles, that's what, that's where I got that from. But I could do r squared plus r squared, which is 2r squared, and then take the square root. So that's how I figured out what that side was, in case you're curious. Okay, so dr dt is 0.5 centimeters per second. r is equal to 4 radical 2. That's in the problem. When the radius is, so that's my when number. Again, it goes in jail. What is the rate of change with the area of the shaded region found outside the square but inside the circle? So I need to find area of the shaded region, so I want d, a, d, t. And then I went ahead and set up an equation. So area of the circle minus the area of the square, 2 radical r times 2 radical r, which becomes this. And this is what I'm going to take the derivative of. So here we go. d, a, d, t equals 2 pi r dr dt minus 4 r dr dt. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and factor out r dr dt. So I've got 2 pi minus 4 times r dr dt. Okay, equals d a d t. Now, I'm looking for d a d t. Cool, it's already alone. That's great. That's a number. Funky number, but it's a number. R is, oh, there's my when. So at this point, I can pull things out of jail. So I'm going to be replacing this R with that. I'm going to replace drdt with this. So I'm going to, now I'm going to plug those things in. So I will have 2 pi minus 4 in parentheses times R which is 4 radical 2 times dr dt, which is 0 0.5. And so my units, this is centimeters. There are no units left here. There were no units in 2 pi or 4. That's centimeters. This is centimeters per second, which makes my units centimeters squared per second. Because centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared which makes sense for my area. And I'm done. I could grab a calculator and get a number, and I probably should. Not going to, but I probably should. Um, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let that be my answer. Um, uh, fine, calculator. So 2, parentheses, 2 pi. Let me do, do the work, and I'll put it up in a minute. 2 pi. Minus 4. Four radical 2 times 0.5. So that's that. 6.4578 centimeters squared per second. But this is correct. I went ahead and made it a number, so that if you had a number on your paper, you could use it to check. There you go. All right. Next problem. Water is dripping through a conical filter, coffee filter at a rate of 11 cubic inches per second. The base diameter of the cone is 8 inches, and the height is 6 inches. Diameter, 8 inches, which means radius, 4 inches. Height, 6. Set up R over H, 4 over 6, 2 thirds. So R is equal to two thirds H, or H is equal to three halves R. 
Okay. How fast is the water level in the cone changing with the, at the instant when the depth is? So water level in the cone, that's dh dt, when the height of the depth of the water is. So I'm going to be using this formula that they gave me. I'm going to replace whichever one I want. So I need dh, so I'll be replacing r. So r will get replaced. So I can have dh. And again, I'm going to leave you to do it. I'm not going to do them all. I have them all set up for you, though. I will show you a setup for every single question, at least to start for every single problem. Okay, so you can see these are all finished. Or set up. So there we are. Rice is being poured into a cylindrical container with a radius of 4.5 inches so that the height of the rice is increasing at a constant rate of 0 0.5 inches per second. So the height of the rice is increasing at, now this is a cylinder, that means the radius is not changing. The radius is not changing. It is not a cone. The radius is constant. That is good. So it says at what rate is the volume changing? So dv dt. When, when, when the height is the same as the radius, it is the same as the radius. Since we know what the radius is, that's what they're asking. There's my formula. Area of the base times the height. Okay. Take the derivative of that. Um, leave it in this. Actually, I would I would replace r since r is 4.5, and that's not changing. It's not a variable. It's just what r is. So R is not a variable, R is a constant. Let's plug it in. So before I take the derivative, I'm gonna do pi 4.5 squared H, and then I'll take the derivative. This is just a number. So I'll make that a number, 4.5 squared is 20.25. This will be 20.25 pi H. Much easier to deal with, that's what I'll be taking my derivative of. See what you can do. All right. Yeah. Okay. If the circumference of a circle is increasing at a constant rate of four feet per second, how fast is the surface area of the circle changing at the instant when the radius is? So the circumference is this. Surface area, or really area. I don't think the word surface kind of confused me. It should just be area. How fast is the area changing at the instant when the radius is? This is again in things, but we know that. So we're going to come back to this one. We're going to do this one together. Just give me a minute. Okay, so when looking at this problem, um, 2 pi r, see, circumference equals 2 pi r, and the rate of change of the circumference. So this is a little bit funky, but I need to solve this. So dc dt equals 2 pi dr dt. Okay, I am looking for da dt. I didn't actually write that down. That should be up here. da dt. Okay, dc dt is 4 feet per second. Equals 2 pi dr dt which means that dr dt is equal to 4 divided by 2 pi feet per second. So that's 2 of a pi. So what I can do with that now, I know dr dt. So I'm going to write that up here. So that's going to be my dr dt equals 2 over pi feet per second. And so then I can find dA dt after I take the derivative here. Okay. 
All right, let's see what you can do with that. And again, we're looking for the ADT, but now we have the RDT. We have to go find that. So take the derivative first, then plug in. We'll be all set. R is 7 set P. Okay. G. The paths of two runners cross at a stop sign. One runner is heading south at a constant rate of 6.5 miles per hour. I just called it Y for no reason. One, the other runner is heading west at a constant. And actually, south, I guess, should be down. Sorry. So these are both, um, so we're moving, if you think about it, they're both sort of negative, but that doesn't matter because we're still talking about distance. So those are our rates, and I just want the X and Y, west and south, and then I have this. This is the, um, yes, this is the one I wanted to do. So this is the related rates problem I wanted to do for you because it's still quite a bit harder than the other um, staggering theorem one. This is the one I wanted to do. So anyway, we're just going to take the derivative and we'll come back to this in just a second. So I've got 2x dx dt. Now I'm going to use color. Let me switch to a color. 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. Oh, that's what will always happen. So we know dy, we know dx, and we know time, but we don't know x, we don't know y, and we don't know z. And we need to find dz dt. So we have four unknowns. It's not okay. I can replace these two with those but I don't know what to do with, do with B. So that's a problem. So I'm gonna use this time thing. So 10 minutes is 1 -sixth of an hour, because there are 60 minutes in an hour, and these are in miles per hour. So 1 -sixth of an hour, right? And so In one sixth of an hour at six miles per hour. So every hour he runs 6.5 miles. So in one sixth of a mile, how much does he run? And so 6.5. I'm using my calculator by the one on there. 6.5 divided by six. He's run one. Make that a fraction. He's run one mile and one twelfth. One, one and one twelfth. So x equals one and one twelfth. Okay. Or 13 over 12, whichever one floats your boat. Whichever one you want to do. For this one, it's going to be seven six. So we'll go ahead and leave it as 13 over 12. One and one sixth, if you want. But again, I'm going to use this one and this one. I'm going to go back here to this equation. Seven over thirteen over twelve. Oops, new color. Thirteen over twelve squared plus seven over six squared equals z squared. I'm going to find z that way. So 13 over 12 is 169 over 144 plus 49 over 36. So I need to times this by 146. I need to times it by 4. So 49 times 4, 196. Cool. So this becomes. 
169 plus 196 over 144 equals Z. And so Three hundred sixty-five. I'm going to continue on this paper. Three sixty-five over one forty-four z squared equals z squared, and so z equals the square root of three sixty-five, which will not be nice over twelve. I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, it's not nice. It's not nice. even nice to clean. So we'll clean it. Leave it like that. So now, going back to the math problem here, going back to the calculus, I have only one unknown. So, 2x. x is 13 over 12 times dx dt. So this, by the way, is x is miles. So miles times miles per hour just means per hour. So oh, it's miles squared per hour. We'll get back to that. Plus 2y, and y is 7 over 6, times dy dt of 7. And again, we have miles squared per hour. Divided by 2z. equals dz dt. Again, this, there's a reason why I did this one for you, with you, is because it's painful. Not just kind of yucky, it's painful. But let's talk units. Miles, miles per hour, so miles per hour squared. Miles, miles per hour, miles per hour squared. So the top is in miles per hour squared. Miles squared per hour miles squared per hour divided by, this is miles. So miles squared divide, per hour divided by miles is miles per hour, which is what Z needs to be. So I'm gonna let my calculator handle that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. I will show you in just a minute when I'm done. We have two. I should really pause this. Times two times five plus two. Times two times seven all over two. Okay, so I've typed in to my calculator exactly what I'm seeing. And I got out that. That's what I'm going to write down. So 9.552 miles per hour. Okay, so again, I used my calculator, typed it in exactly as I saw it, lots of fractions, parentheses, all the good stuff, okay? Um, and there you go, you can see why I wanted to do G with you, right? Didn't want you to leave it, that one. So H, um, the RDT equals D. Oh wait, let's read it. The radius and height of a cone both increase at a constant rate of 
Ah, radius and height both increase at a constant rate of. So dr dt and dh dt, constant rate of. Whoa, blurry, blurry, blurry. One point five centimeters per second. At what rate is volume increasing at the moment that the height is and the diameter is? So height is, diameter is, which means radius is, blah blah blah, and r is equal to three over two h, and h is equal to two over three r. Um, so what rate is the volume increasing when the height is and the radius is? Um, so I don't know. Why I actually need this relationship. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I don't want to use a product rule. But I'm going to go ahead and trade it out. DVDT. But since I know DR and DH, I didn't actually need to do that. Product rule, or it's up to you. DVDT. So we'll actually, so before we go to DVDT, the formula we're dealing with is this. And you can either replace pi or r, uh, r or h with the other one, and it doesn't matter which you do, or you cannot replace them in this problem because you know both of the rates and you can use a product rule. That's totally up to you. It's not that hard. So what is that about without a product? So you can either replace or not replace. It's totally your call. And lastly, I and J. How much higher can I go? A little bit. In a triangle, the base is increasing at a constant rate of, while the height is decreasing at a constant rate. So increasing and decreasing. And I could I drew a right triangle, and it doesn't matter. But I thought, you know, I mean, because I could have drawn another triangle. H and B. But it makes no difference, so I just left it as a right triangle. Um, the base is increasing and the height is decreasing. At the instant when the base is and the height is, so when, and so again, those are in jail, what is the rate of change of the area? If we want DADT, we're going to go here. We have to use a product rule. We do not have a choice. So, A equal DADT equals one half the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Let's just move this. Derivative of the second. Okay. Derivative done. Oh. Over the second, I forgot to put one half over here. So instead, I'll go like this. No, I'll have to write it twice. So just plug everything in. B is six. H D T is negative. plus h is 10 times 2.8 centimeters per second and calculator time point 0.5 which is one half parentheses 6 times negative point zero seven. Parentheses, wait, not quite, plus 10 times 2.8, close parentheses, 11.9. What I wanted to be sure is that it wasn't negative. 11.9 centimeters squared plus centimeters squared. Centimeters, oh wait, this is centimeters. This is centimeters, so these are both centimeters squared. There you go. And the last one. Is actually one of the easiest on the whole sheet. The edge of the cube is growing at a rate of six inches per second. So I just called edge x six inches per second. X is eleven inches. That's our when. 
and again we use that leader. What is the rate of change of the volume? So there's the formula for finding the volume of a cube. Oh, really? Um, that one's really, really easy. I'm going to leave you to do it. That's really simple. It's easier than all of them. What a nice present at the end of the worksheet. So good luck. I hope you had a good time with these. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon.